Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So as you can see, I am not in my normal kitchen. If you follow me on Instagram, you may realize I'm in my new studio and this is my new business partner, Liat. Hi everyone. So Liat is a really amazing cake decorator. Her Instagram is caked and baked. Um, so go and check all her beautiful cakes out. <laughs> And um, if you've been following my journey, you know that I've moved to Tel Aviv and together we built an amazing baking studio and we thought it would be an amazing opportunity to make a crazy Christmas cake. Liat specializes in fondant, which is not, I don't want to say like my strong point, I'm just scared of it, let's be honest. <laughs> You're fine with it. I'm, I, I can do it. But anyway, this cake is going to be a combination of both of our skills and I think it's going to be pretty epic. Seriously epic. If it goes to plan. If it goes to plan, <laughs> which of course we have a plan. So this cake is going to be four tiers and each tier is going to be a completely different design combining our specialities. So there's going to be some fondant, there's going to be, I didn't even know what, Christmas tree on there, all sorts. But would you like to explain what our first tier is going right. to be? So you can see in front of us, we've kind of got some gingerbread shapes upside down to you at the moment. <laughs> We're going to be our bottom tier which is going to be this really pretty wintry gingerbread Christmas scene. So we've got some gingerbreads in our shapes that we've pre-baked already and now we are going to decorate these with royal icing and we're doing these first because we need to give it time for the royal icing to set. Now I have a gingerbread recipe. Last year I did a really fun video with my mum which that you also fun. saw <laughs> and the year before that I made some gingerbread with my nephew. So the recipes are on my channel as well as the royal icing. So what I'm going to do is do a white outline on each house and get a little bit of detail in and then Liat's going to go in with some colour and flood it. So the coloured royal icing is slightly thinner than the white because it's easier to spread. So I don't have a piping tip on this piping bag, I just cut the hole really small and all I'm going to do first is draw an outline of the shape. We've done some random shapes, some with pointed tops some square, some round, we've also got some Christmas trees. But I'm just going to add a little bit of detail. For example, on this one, I'm going to do a window and maybe do the window pane as well. Liat, you can go yeah. ahead and flood that with a colour. So, as you can see, the coloured icing is a lot looser than the white. To be honest, ideally, you would let the white set but um, we've got a lot of cake to get on with, so <laughs> we're kind of rushing things. But what we are going to do is decorate all these biscuits now and then leave them overnight so they're super hard before we attach them to the cake. I'm just going in with a toothpick to push in the icing right to the edges of the line. Beautiful. And I'm going to leave this to the side to completely set before we add the final details, which are gonna be little icicles on top of the roof and windows. Look at it looks like Notting Hill. <laughs> oh my God, it does look like Notting Hill. We've made Christmas at Notting Hill. <laughs> so we've left these to dry for 10 minutes or so, and they need longer to set, obviously, but the top has set, which means we can add the icicles on. So with Thanks. some white, you basically pipe a blob of royal icing, stop pushing it through and then drag it downwards. And you get this kind of point. You do them all along the roof and some of them might be longer than others, but I think that adds to the effect and it makes them look a little bit more natural too. This is actually a really good way how to decorate biscuits if you're new to royal icing. Um, neither of us are biscuit experts. You really have to have like such attention to detail. It's we a wish whole we had. Skill. Yeah. Um, but you can still do simple things to make it look effective. Gorgeous. They are so cute. So already we can see this like snowy scene happening and this is just the beginning of our mega cake. Aww. I can't wait to make this thing tomorrow. It's yeah. going to be awesome. So better prep on it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like we said, we're going to leave these to completely set. They're going to get rock hard for tomorrow. And then tomorrow we're going to show you how to decorate the rest of the cake. Yay. So see you tomorrow. Should we have a coffee now? Oh, please. Absolutely. 
So we left our biscuit setting overnight and today we're going to focus on creating the other tiers for our cake and we're going to start off with the fondant layer. So I'm going to pass it over to the fondant queen herself who's going to guide us through how to make a gift box. Right, okay. So one of our tiers is going to be a gift box as Georgia mentioned. So what we have here is a ganached square cake. So we use ganache to cover our cake rather than buttercream because it's much a sturdier base than using buttercream which can tend to fall, especially if we're doing um, a layered cake with several mm. tiers where it's going to have the weight on top. So the ganache itself will help keep the structure in place and especially when we're trying to create really sharp edges, it always works easier with ganache. Makes sense. So to cover our cake, we're going to use some fondant. Wow. Ready for some muscle work? Absolutely. I'm right. going to enjoy watching you. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we're able to use fondant while we have to knead it until it's really soft and pliable. Which is Which? where the muscle work comes in. So it's literally the same action as kneading dough in a way. Absolutely. I'm using my heel, folding, heel, folding. So the heel of my palm, I should say. The heel of my palm and folding back in to the middle. And I can already see it getting smoother. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. So before I roll, I'm going to come in again with some more corn flour. Even though we're doing a square cake, always roll in a circle. And we need the circle to be much bigger than the actual surface of our cake. So, to roll the perfect circle, backwards and forwards, and then turn 90 degrees. Backwards, forwards, and turn. And this ensures that you still keep the circular shape as you roll. So like you would roll out pastry, you want to keep the pressure as even as possible to yeah. get a flat roll. See, I'm happy with that. Oh, it's so smooth and even. So, so now I need to pick this up. Some people like to pick up their whole mat and cover it. Wow. I don't because I still feel like that's my underside. Okay. I put on um, just to help it be non-stick because mm -hmm. what I'm actually going to do is fold it over the rolling pin to help me lift it up and onto see. the cake. So my rolling pin is going to go in the middle. I'm going to fold you over and let's bring this, fold that over the rolling pin. You're going to look for the midway point on the surface so that you can mark it down and then gently fold it over. So you've picked it up and that's all covered. I'm not too worried that I have some exposed sides because as mm -hmm. you go around the fondant itself it stretches. starts to stretch. First thing you like to do is a surface, okay? Mm -hmm. This will just ensure there aren't any air bubbles trapped up the top. So I like to smooth it over with this smoother and make it nice and flat on top. So if you know me well, you know that I don't touch fondant, but you can see that there are specific tools that you need. So we'll write them in the comments below. So if you're interested in trying this out, then you can get the correct equipment. Okay, so now what we're doing is doing something called skirting. So I'm gonna start working my way around the edge of the cake about let's say maximum two centimetres and start to press that down. Mm -hmm. When I get to the corners, I put it out a little bit and pinch it into place. If there are any bits that look like it's starting to pull, you just pinch it back into place. So it's very mouldable and you can yeah. put things back together. And now I'm just going to keep working my way around the cake in the same manner, using my hands to smooth it down into place. As we get into the bottom, I'm using this edge ridge of my hand to push it all the way down and make sure my hand is hitting the turntable and allows me to smooth it out without any creases or ridges at all. So I'm just going to work that all the way around. And where I do have a crease, you can just open that up and push down. And I'm happy with that. Now, I have to say, this is my favourite fondant tool. Pizza cutter. A pizza cutter. <laughs> I'm just going to use this to cut away the excess that we don't need anymore. So not right to the edge of the cake? No, I'm still leaving a good centimetre around. Mm -hmm. um, always leave a little bit until you're completely finished smoothing. So at this stage, because our cake was kept in the fridge, depending on where you are and if you need to have your cake refrigerated, it might feel a little bit tacky. If you notice, I didn't actually add anything to the ganache mm -hmm. when I added the fondant. The fondant right. stuck straight on and that's because of the natural condensation that was occurring from the ganache, it mm -hmm. makes it wet. If you do need to wet it, you can gently mist with a little bit of water and that's all it needs. Okay, there. and it, it sticks to it. it will stick to it. So I don't need to, but what I do need to do now, it's my favorite thing to watch. Smoothies. But before I do that, as I was saying, it's a little bit tacky because it was kept in. So if I go over the font of the smoothies now, it might pick up and create some friction. So I am gonna use a little bit of corn flour just to help me. Now I'm not worried about the corn flour leaving marks at this point because one, I'm going to go over it several times and two, 
it will absorb any excess moisture, uh, moisture that happens and it does disappear. And if you're struggling to get it off as well, getting over a kitchen towel, kitchen Just paper, picks it, dust, it picks up and dusts it off. So first, back over the top like we did before. Then on the sides, the same thing. And as I do this, I am pushing down along the bottom to create that sharp mm -hmm. and neat edge there. It's so perfect. I wish you were my teacher when I started out <laughs> making cakes because I did not even own those smoothers. <laughs> I wish I had a teacher when I first started making cakes. So as you can see, I've really pushed that down and that's going to create that sharp, crisp edge, which is really important when you're making a box shape mm -hmm. cake so it looks real. I'm still leaving that excess on the bottom so I don't need to worry about cutting it off, but I'm happy that I've got it smoothed out and that's fine. So now I want to make some really sharp edges all along the top and on the sides. Mm -hmm. So for that, you need two. The idea is, is that you're building corners by making the fondant come up on the sides. And that way. And that so it's edge. a bit like buttercream. Exactly the same like we did with the buttercream, mm -hmm. but we're creating that sharp corner. So with the one on the side, I'm gently pushing it up and I'm gonna rub this way. And it's a bit like that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, so this is coming up and down and this one's going in circles. So you're going to go all the way around the edges and, and then and are you going to do the I'll sides? Do the sides in exactly the same way by pinching them, a bit tacky, pinching them together in that way. But you can see already here mm -hmm. it's starting to happen. I'll be here a while. So I'm just finishing off here this last corner. And now, beautiful. It's, that looks pretty sharp. So I'm going to come in, not with my pizza cutter now, just with my little craft knife and cut off the excess. On the bottom. So I add it to the ball. You can add it to the ball. Because you can reuse fondant, right? You can. Um, I try to keep it separate from the main untouched lot. Mm hmm. Because it's obviously got the added corn flour in, exactly. right? Exactly. See, I'm learning. Well done. Looks amazing. Square cakes are not easy. Hence why this is the first tutorial <laughs> I've done on my channel. Coming soon. <laughs> so, to make our gift box really look like a gift, we need to make a pretty um, so we're going to make a nice bow. So things when modelling, uh, you need to leave things to dry a little bit, otherwise it can just collapse, look, collapse and look sad. Whereas we want this kind of character, big mm -hmm. uh, bow to go on. So we're going to make this now and then leave it on the side to dry out. So we're going for pink because why we not? Love pink. <laughs> <laughs> um, this has already been kneaded out as we mixed our colours. Let me just make that soft. We want to roll out a nice kind of strip. So same as before, rolling backwards and forwards, but because I want a strip, I'm not rotating. We want it quite thick, but not too thick, otherwise it's too heavy and also takes a very long time to dry. Mm -hmm. Again, pizza cutter. So this is a really good tool for making straight lines, especially if you're cutting strips um, or stripes of any sort. It just keeps it neat and sharp without pulling. So it's great. So we want it, really technical measurement now, about four fingers wide. <laughs> now I've got this strip. So the idea is I'm gonna fold half of it into the middle and loop the other part to make our bow. So I'm bringing that bit into the middle and I'm just gonna pinch that down. If your fondant is a bit dry, this one's nice and tacky still, um, you can use some edible glue or water. And again, so I've shoved the papers in there and you can see it keeps that looped shape. Okay, from here, I'm now gonna pinch the middle down to create that knotted like bow effect. And the creases. And the creases as I go. So I flipped it over and I'm gonna start pinching. Now when you pinch, you don't wanna squash the fondant. You're literally pinching and allowing the folds to form, which might need a little bit of help from your hand. So as you can see, I'm just doing that and I'm creating that natural fold. It looks like right a ribbon. There. So what I do like to do as well, using my little fingers, just to kind of dig in on one side and on the other. This adds that realistic mm -hmm. touch. What we want to do is to cut a small narrow strip to be like the knot in the middle. And bring that round to the back as well and if you need to use water to stick it you can but mine's okay 
gorgeous. That that's a cute bow, isn't it? It's perfection. I think that's the best bow you've ever done. I really like you. <laughs> so we're going to leave that there to dry. Important at this stage, don't touch it. If you do touch it when it's dry, it can start to um, crease and get like elephant skin, I like to call mm. it. So it's best it's just to leave it to dry completely before trying to put it onto your cake. In the meantime, we're going to make the bow to go around our box. So this we obviously don't want to dry because no. you need it flexible enough to go around the square exactly. shape. Again, I'm just kneading that all back together again. So I've got my ball of fondant. I'm gonna use my smaller welding pin because I wanna make a couple of narrow strips. So in the studio, we've held um, an introduction to fondant glass with this exact design because it still looks really effective, but it is kind of an introductory level of fondant, yes, isn't it? Yeah, we're not it? doing intricate modelling or anything. Yeah, so if you are new to fondant, it's a great design to practice on. And then do the same again. So now we're ready to put this on our cake. So. You go, wow, it's getting heavy. You forget yeah. how heavy fondant is. <laughs> Which is why it's great to use ganache for this. Okay, so careful. I'm gonna put one strip through the middle, gently lay it down. The second one is just gonna crisscross over in a true gift box fashion. A little bit of the excesses here. Beautiful. Wow, I love these colours together. It's a great combo, right? Yeah. So as you can see here, we've got a slight bump for where they've crossed. Normally, if this was a single tiered cake, our bow would kind of sit on mm -hmm. top nicely. But because we're being extra today, and <laughs> this is going to be an in-between tier, I'm just going to cut out this little circle of the square in the middle. We don't need it. So um, it sits flat. So the next cake, the cake on top will sit flat on there. Perfect. So our bow's left to dry. We will also be adding on like the tails of the bow, but we can do that when we put on the bow at the end. Okay, perfect. So let's put this aside and make a few more fondant decorations for the other tiers as well. So these are looking so cute. As Liat said, it's important to leave your fondant decorations drying out. So we're going to leave these like this, and by the time we add them to the other tiers, they'll be dry enough to use. So Great. what tier are we gonna do now? The tree. Let's go for the tree. Of course, it's a Christmas cake, so we're gonna have to have a Christmas tree on it. So we thought it'd be nice to top the whole cake with the Christmas tree. What we've got here is a small four inch on top of a six inch, because we're actually gonna carve it into a cone shape and then pipe on the green buttercream and make it look like a Christmas tree. Right. So, would you like to start carving? <laughs> <laughs> no pressure or anything right now. So the idea is that we're gonna make this kind of cone-like shape, the whole way through, conical shape. So I'm gonna start by carving the edge of the bottom here. Forgot to mention, and a really important point, the cake has been in the fridge for a couple of hours and it's completely cold. So it hardens the cake slightly, as well as the buttercream. You don't want to be doing this on a soft cake. No, it will become all crumbly and fall apart. Now, I'm gonna go over and start with the top. Again, I'm being conservative. I'm very scared of Georgia next to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna keep going around until I'm satisfied with the shape that we've achieved. Oh, that looks perfect. So you can see, I've had to take in a fair bit. We started off really, really small, taking small cuts, slowly, slowly working our way around until we achieve the right angle. And it's nice, nice conical, that's the word yeah. I was looking for, conical shape for our tree. Yeah, it's not too sharp as well, it's kind of got this cuteness to it. Yeah, it has. Cute. But once, once we go over it with our little concrete that we're going to do now, yes. um, it will, we, we can, can change the shape. The shape. And, yeah. Exactly. So. We have some of our Swiss meringue buttercream here. And like Liat said, we're gonna go over with a thin layer of buttercream for our crumb coat. I'll start off with a palette knife and work my way up the cake. At this stage, you can use the buttercream to correct the shape as well. So you can fill in those gaps that we had right between the two exactly. tiers. Okay, so this is where this gap is. So I'll put a little bit more buttercream there and just smooth that out. And we are gonna go over with piping detail. So the shape doesn't have to be exact, right. uh, not like the fondant <laughs> it was. And I'm not too worried about the sharp point at the top because of course we're going to top this tree up with a little star. 
and we can also pipe the top as well. So right now you can't even see where the two tiers met. That's right. So because it's a rounded surface, I've got some acetate here and I can curve the acetate and scrape off the excess buttercream, maintaining the curved surface. They were really smooth yeah. and nicely. You use all the marks. If you try to do a curved shape um, cake to a palette knife, it just doesn't yeah. work. And I'll just take off that excess here. So all the crumbs are enclosed and like any cake, this is going to chill for about half an hour for this to set before we go over with our buttercream on the top. Okay, crumb coat is nice and firm, so now we're going to pipe on some buttercream. So we have a piping bag each with a French star tip, and we were thinking it's going to look really nice rather than just splodging on the buttercream as stars. We like to be a bit extra and go with scrolls. So, I've never done this with two people, so this will be interesting. I'm, I'm gonna let you go first. <laughs> so the idea is to kind of pipe and then scoop up like this, and then do rows and rows, and eventually it will look like a Christmas tree. Hopefully, petrified to pipe next year. <laughs> Let's <laughs> give it a go. So, the action is kind of like a wave. So, I'm going over and up. Beautiful! So let's continue that and go row by row. I think we should pipe in between. In between, well. yeah. It's one of those things that I have this in mind, but it always comes out so much better than I thought. It's kind of like, yay! It actually worked! And just to finish off, we're going to do a blob of buttercream at the top and continue until we get to the very tree. And it's so cute! It came out really well. Now you can sing the Christmas tree song. Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree. So because it's just going to be the most crazy looking four tier cake, I think minimal decoration on right, the tree. Great. So we've got some small round sprinkles and I think you can just dot them on while the buttercream's soft so they can stick to it. Right, this is going to go in the fridge because this is going to sit on top of our cake and to put it onto our cake is going to be a bit of a mission. So it's always easier <laughs> when it's cold. So we need to get this really cold before we put it on top of our cake. So this is our ugly Christmas sweater layer, which basically means it's going to have a load of Christmassy decorations and Christmas stripes. Um, none of them match, but it will look cute in the end, just like a Christmas jumper. Do you wear one? No, I used to and it was like little fairy lights on and it was cute. So the base of this tier is gonna be striped buttercream. Usually I freehand my stripes with different colored piping bags, but I'm going to be using a cake comb to show you the effect and how neat you can get the stripes if you use one of these. But what I'm gonna do first is a layer of white because we want to do alternate white and colored layers. Right. So I have a bag of Swiss meringue buttercream here and we want a thick layer of buttercream on the outside when you're using a comb. So, I might need your help. Go. You're gonna turn and I'm gonna pipe, okay? <laughs> so with the piping bag, you get a much thicker layer of buttercream on the outside. It's actually a lot <laughs> easier like this. All the way to the top. And then I'm going to go around the outside, pack those corners in, and then I don't need to do a whole layer on top, but enough to cover the cake. So as usual, I'm going to focus on the top and getting that nice and flat first. It is a tiered cake, so really important to get it as flat as possible. And when it's quite a large tier, I actually use my scraper to get a flat top. So I can put it on one side and go all the way across. And it basically acts as a large palette knife. Right. So you don't get that bump in the exactly. middle. Exactly. And you can see I've actually got some buttercream collected in the middle because that's where the bump was. And now I'm going to do the stripes. So I'm going to place the comb against the cake and turn. And I'm going to start off a little bit soft, just to kind of get it into place. And I'm not going to move my scraper because you want those stripes to remain straight. So the whole idea of the comb is to create the groove that you'll fill in afterwards with the colors, isn't it? Exactly. So we're going to freeze this layer afterwards, but it's important to get those white stripes as perfect as possible because once they're frozen, you can't touch them again. So 
So that looks pretty smooth, happy with that. It's got enough grooves to fill with the colour on the next layer. So before that, we need to put this in the freezer to make sure this is solid. So it's going to go in there for about half an hour to get it rock hard before we go on with the other colours. And so what about the top edge there? So you can, I suppose, clean it at right. this point. But if you've seen on my other videos, my trick how to get a nice sharp corner is to also put it in the freezer. So because we're putting it in the freezer might anyway, well. we might as well do that too. So this will go in for about half an hour. So this cake is now solid. So if I touch the buttercream, I can feel it's completely set. So it's a good time to clean off those corners. So I've got a sharp knife here. And very carefully, I'm just going to go over the outer rim and remove the large pieces of buttercream. Okay, happy with that. So whilst it's still cold, are you going to poke on the stripes? Sure. We're going to fill in these grooves of the buttercream with some coloured buttercream and to go with the rest of the cake we've chosen green and pink. The idea is we have to cut a pretty small hole out of this piping bag and I'm going to go in and fill in where the grooves are. You want to fill in the gap but not too much because as you scrape over it you will get like a, a spreading overfill. We're alternating our pink and green just because we want it to be Christmas colours, but this also looks really good just with two colours. Yes, it does. I'm really enjoying this colour combination. So, here I've got just a normal side scraper, which I'm now going to scrape the colours and make them fill those grooves evenly. So at first I'm going to take off quite a lot. So I've just taken off the majority of the excess and now I can go and make it extra smooth and make the lines really defined but you basically go over and over until all the grooves are filled and because the white is completely set that's not being affected when i scrape it is a bit scary because you think you're going to start blending in yeah. the colors, isn't it i'm happy with that are you yeah that looks great now just to clean off the very top, I've cleaned my palette knife and I'm just going to clean the very top because there was a little bit of colour that went onto there. So before we put this in the fridge to fully firm up before we stack the cakes, we're just going to pipe a little wreath on the front because I think that's just going to look super cute and obviously it's as Christmassy as possible. So make sure we've covered all bases yeah, of the Christmas. Yeah, all basics. <laughs> Which reminds me, loads of you actually answered my story on Instagram with loads of suggestions. So we actually went through all of them and picked out the ones we liked. So this is, of course, based on all of your <laughs> suggestions. Um, so because we want a circular shape, we are actually going to use a cutter and just mark on the side of the cake where we want it. Just marking the buttercream. So we've got some darker green buttercream in two piping bags, one with a small star nozzle and one with a leaf tip. And we're going to use both of these to create a cute little wreath. So I'm gonna start off with a few small rosettes, some larger and some smaller, following the shape of that circle. And I'm just going to make it more of a circular shape by filling in with some dots. And now for the leaf tip. And then just to decorate the wreath, we've got some little sugar sprinkles. And we're gonna dot them around the wreath just to finish off the decoration. So on this layer, we're going to add in all our other fondant decorations as mm -hmm. well, right? But we're going to do that when it's all stacked to make sure that the fondant's fully dried out and this is fully chilled because we need to stack it. So for our final layer, which is the bottom of the cake, we've chosen to do a 10 inch cake because that's going to be the base and we're going to be decorating a cake dummy because otherwise it's a lot of cake. Um, <laughs> and also it's a good chance for you to see how a dummy is decorated. So for this, we're going to create a snowy scene and after we've applied the buttercream, we're going to put on those gingerbread houses that we made yesterday. So we have some bluey turquoisey coloured buttercream and white because we're going to create a kind of snowy 
ombre scene effect. I have an ombre buttercream video, which you may have seen. We're going to do it slightly different because we don't need such a gradual change of colors. We just kind of want half of it white and half of it blue right, for the it's sky. More of a skyline in this yeah, exactly. So it's more of a skyline. So we're still going to blend the colors together, but in a different way. So for a dummy, obviously you don't have the cake underneath. So you want a fairly thick layer of buttercream, which is why I'm going to pipe it. I'm going to start off with the white and go to the very base because you obviously don't want that dummy coming through and then work my way up. And you can see the buttercream sticks directly to the dummy so you don't need to prepare it beforehand in any way. And we're going up about halfway. With the yeah, white, right? exactly. So we'll do half with the white buttercream and then half with blue. I wonder how many times we've spun a turntable. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> Lots. There should be a counter on it. <gasps> and I'm coming right to the white just so it really meets up and we can make a nice blend. Now I'm just going to put the remaining on top. And we don't want the top to be too thick because it's really nice and flat because it's a dummy <laughs> and the rest of the cake is going to sit on it. So same way like normal, we're just going to spread that around. So there's obviously benefits to working on a dummy. <laughs> the top is completely flat and the sides are straight. However, it doesn't have the weight of a cake and it could be a little bit trickier, kind of controlling, especially scraping the sides. So don't be fooled. Just because it's a dummy, it still is a little bit challenging, but obviously if you're making a very tall cake and you don't want all the cake to go to waste, then a dummy's your if answer. If you don't need to serve so many people, there's no point. So where? the two colours are, we're just going to blend that in with the palette knife and that way we create a nice blended effect between the two colours. So it really will look like a nice snowy scene for the sky going into the snow. Rather than like a line of blue exactly. and a line of white. And that's what we're avoiding here. That looks good. So now I'm going to scrape. Yeah, that blended really nicely. Yeah. Yeah, that's smooth enough. Yeah, that's great. And as usual, I'm just going to tidy off the corners. Perfect. That blend worked really well. Really happy with that. So before we attach our gingerbread houses, uh, we've got a nice little trick to make it a little bit more snowy. I have a little bit of water and I've already put it in a shallow dish because I need just to wet the brush a little bit, and I've got some white gel for you colouring. Now, the purpose of the water is just to make it a bit easier to flick. Go in with some white gel. And now yeah. I'm going to stand back because I don't want to get covered in white paint. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but we're getting these tiny little white specks all over the cake. And just as Liat's finishing that, I'm going to bring our gingerbread houses that we left to set and they are completely rock hard, so the icing will not move. So rather than putting the cake in the fridge to set the buttercream, we want it soft because it's going to act as a glue to stick our gingerbread houses on. So let's get sticking. Right, do we have a plan for this? Is no, there an order? Just no two colours together, obviously. Oh, <laughs> We got our gingerbread village. That's oh, super cute. I'm adorable. So adorable. <laughs> this is what I had in mind. Yes. Even better. <laughs> right, now we're going to set this in the fridge because we want to make sure the gingerbread is fully secure to the cake. And then I believe it's time to stack <gasps> all four layers and decorate. Are you scared? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to stack our cake. If you haven't already, check out my channel for my stacking cake video. I go through every single detail, what uh, what equipment you need and everything. So go ahead and check there. But in the meantime, we are going to get stacking and I'm going to just put a little bit of buttercream petrified on oh, here first. <laughs> Oh my god. 
That wasn't easy. That was not easy <laughs> at all. So what we realised midway, you probably saw, um, the idea was that the gift box was going to be the second to uh, top layer, but because it's square, it was a little bit big, so we ended up changing it. We did. So what we're going to do now is add the final decorations, but also fill in the in-between layers with things like desiccated coconut, some piping, and maybe some sprinkles too. Yeah, I'm going to go for it now. So let's have fun. <laughs> Oh my god. I like this right now. <laughs> <laughs> we got there in the end. Oh, we did it! <laughs> okay, do you know what's missing though? Every Christmas tree has to have a star. So we've got a gingerbread star that we painted in gold dust and it goes on top of the cake. Oh my god. I love it! High five! <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe we actually did it. Um, this was insane. So much fun. I would wow. say try this out. Um, <laughs> hope you enjoyed watching. We had so much fun. I hope you had fun watching <laughs> us. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and check out all my other videos and head over to Liat's Instagram, which I'll put in the comments below to see her amazing cakes too. Have a wonderful Christmas. Happy New Year and see you in the new year for lots more tutorials, hopefully a little more simple than this one. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Everyone. Merry Christmas, <laughs> bye.